Scotty Scheffler fucks up another one of our weeks and gives us another second place to Scotty making, I don't know, three, four, five, six of those happening this year. Um, you know, we are on Tommy, come up one shot short because of this motherfucker. My count is four times. We had Harmon at the players, fucking Morikawa at Memorial, Tom Kim at Travelers from the playoff. And then Tommy yesterday. That's and they were all by one shot. Obviously, Tom Kim was in the playoff, but the rest of them were by one shot. So it's not like second place by a long shot. Like we he's a fucking asshole. I fucking hate him. I don't know. There's nothing else to say. Like what the fuck? You shoot fucking 62 yesterday, really? Yeah. I've never disliked a player as much as, as him. And I, I know it's not his fault that he's great, but it's just it really is just bullshit. Um, and Tommy, people are jumping on me saying Tommy's a loser. Hate him. I get that because he did make a bad bogey on 17 and it was a horrible chip. But if, if Sky doesn't shoot 62, Tommy still wins that event. He beat Xander and Rom. Yeah, he did. What, uh, we'll get into Rom in a second, but on that chip. So I was in a golf tournament with my daughter. I was watching the last few holes on my phone. Why didn't he putt that? He should have putted. Devin said he should have putted it. I agreed he should have putted it. Um, right? Don't you get it closer than twenty feet if you putt it? He could have made it. I thought. I text Matt. He can make this thing if he just keeps it on the ground. I also thought even if you don't want to putt it, why don't you back foot it and bump it into the hill? Yeah. I don't. I just felt like that was the worst option that he chose. Yeah. I everyone. Agree. Everyone overrated that he has his caddy back on the bag. I mean, hit the fucking right shot in that situation. Especially, not only is it the right, I don't think he hit the right shot, but I also think he left himself the biggest room for error by choosing that shot. You know, like a yeah. bad shot on that is much worse than a bad shot would have been like Blake said on a putt. He had a bad putt, what are you, seven feet away? And you still got a real shot at it. Yeah, I still thought he made the putt there. Was a, he put it great. He did every he did everything great. He had one bad that that was a bad hole. I mean, he didn't get that par five, and I know that was a bad second shot on fourteen. He I don't know why he changed from a five wood to a seven wood, and then he came up short. He had a five wood in his hands, backed off it, took a seven wood. Do you see that, Blake? Uh, nope, I only saw the last three holes. I saw oh, from sixteen on. Oh, that that was what cost the tournament. He pounded the drive down the middle, had two fifty, two forty in. And he had a five wood getting ready to hit the shot. And then he backed off it, switched to a seven wood, came up three feet short of the green and didn't even go in the sand. It kind of plugged right in between the sand, the thick grass between the sand and the, and the green and uh, had, had no shot at it, had to kind of punch it out to 30 feet rather than, and even the bunker shot, he was playing those long bunker shots really well. Uh, all week. On Saturday on that hole. Holy yeah. God. That was fucking nasty. So it was a bad sh- decision to pull the seven wood, and it was a bad shot because he didn't carry it, but it was a much worse break than it was a shot. Yeah, and then he stuck it on 16 when he needed a bird. Beautiful shot, rolls the putt, dead middle. Yeah. Yeah, I don't I mean, know. I, I mean, I, you guys watched it um, on Sunday. It doesn't seem like a gag job when he, he shoots five under. No. Beats his two playing partners. I mean, he pounded X and fuck X was fucking terrible. And then Rom fucking fell apart. I actually stopped tracking it when Rom got to 20. I was like, fuck, we lose. I think Tommy was like six shots back. What happened to John? He, he was four back, two holes, birdie bogey, birdie bogey. Yeah. And he hit, hit a double, right? I double. think later on, John. Oh, double was on 14. Oh, sorry. Yeah, he was he was done by then. I got you. Tommy and Ron were tied. And it was John, tied. So, yeah. so on 10, on 10, Ron was four up. Uh, Tommy birdied 11 and 12. Ron bogeyed 11 and 12. So they were both at 18 16. under. 16? 18. Going 18. on the 14th. Going on the 14th hole. And then that's when Ron made a double and Tommy made a par. Um, but then Scheffler started throwing with the leaderboard. And I, I mean, even when Scheffler tied him, he was minus 320. I know, because I actually went on to hedge it, and then Tommy hit a fucking that shit chip, and the odds went away, and I couldn't hedge shit. So like it was over. Like so, I know people want to say Tommy gagged it because he bogeyed seventeen. Even the odds indicated once Scheffler 
was in the rough on 17, hits it to 17 feet, and makes the birdie. That's that's the tournament. And it wasn't based on anything Tommy did. Scheffler just came up and take it. So I actually – people aren't going to like it, but Tommy's a loser, blacklist. But is X or Rom on the blacklist or these other players who played horrible? He played good. He shot five under, made a bunch of great shots, looked amazing with the putter, hit some clutch shots, clutch putts. He had a bad chip on 17, but Scotty went and took it anyway. And if Scotty shoots a 64, Tommy wins despite – one bogey on 17. It's not like right. 17 is the easiest hole in the world either. It's the second toughest hole all week, right? Yeah. So I, I don't think he, I thought Tommy was good. I, I I will not hesitate to bet Tommy again in Europe. Oh, for sure. For sure. Um, Rory was storming too, right? And then he yeah. just, he just fucking hit in the water. Like he's such a fucking loser, man. Like he, he just doesn't have that level that Scheffler has where he does can't make that mis- big mistake. You know, what's funny about that is they interviewed him after the round and I was watching all the interviews and he was talking about um, how he didn't know what the score was when he was charging. And then the first time he looked at the leaderboard, he's like, Oh my God, I'm only one back. And that was when he hit it in the water. Oh my God. I was like, you shouldn't be saying this out loud, man. That doesn't, that just doesn't sound good. You, so you were playing well until you knew you could win. Then you started playing poorly. What a fucking loser. Oh my God. He said the and two that's guys basically what he said at the US Open, too. Yeah. Right? He said he was he was looking at uh what Bryson was doing, was not paying attention to <laughs> So if he knows he can win, he's not gonna win. Oh, he's such a mental midget. Fuck. What a loser. He but- said, um he also said I was fifteen, I think we went in the water. It was the par three, and he said the two guys both had wedge and both uh, hit it high and the wind took it. They both went 30, 40 feet over the pin. And he's like, I was down one. So I thought I needed to make a birdie. And I, so I went one down and the, it didn't get high enough. The wind didn't push it as enough. So it was short. Wow. Um, overall thoughts on the event. I thought it was good. I mean, I don't, I don't, I think, you know, I was on the, um, New Zealand radio the other day again and talking about, the, how how why do the Olympics not mean as much as it should? It's only the third time it's happened in the last 112 years. You can't make things matter. So I don't think there's anything we can do right now to say, oh, Olympics is the most meaningful thing in the world. I think it takes time and to build prestige. But I do think it felt relatively important. I thought it was uh, right there with the players, don't you? That yeah, that. I came on here and said last week that this is going to be one of the best events all year. And it was, although it didn't end like we wanted it to. I mean, that was fucking awesome. I know we only had, what, 25 players who you could say, okay, they can win. And 10 of them showed up and they were throwing haymakers all weekend. It would be cool if they could change the qualifying. uh, So we don't have all these fucking shit bags. Why don't we just get the best guys in the world at the event? Yeah, like, where's Cam Smith for Australia? What the fuck are we doing, guys? I mean, t- to me, it wasn't players. Not because it wasn't exciting, just because the what it meant wasn't... I don't. I just can't... It, to me, it just doesn't mean that, that much right now. To the, I know the guys are saying it does. I do. I know that. To me, it felt like WGC France. I don't know, man. I thought it was... I, I don't even think the players means a lot anymore. I think Tom Kim would have rather won that than I, I think he'd rather have won yesterday than win the president's cup and not just yeah. for his own self-interest. I think for his self-interest, definitely. Yeah. But I don't think that's the only reason. What's like, going to mean more in four years winning the Olympic medal at Riviera or fucking winning TPC Sawgrass. I would say the Olympics at Riviera. To the players, I guess it does. Well, I'm asking you. To me, I, I still prefer the players. The field's much better. Well, yeah, the field is better. It's full field. I mean, is it better, though? I mean, not including the lift stuff. I mean, in four years, I would imagine those guys will be in. Right. But, I, no, I, I understand your point. I understand your point. It did, feel, it did feel pretty good. I guess what meant more, Scotty winning the players or Scotty winning this? To me, it was the players. He only cried at this one. Fuck him. 
<laughs> him and his buddy Tom <laughs> cried too because he has to go to the fucking military. I, I did want to say Tom has time. I mean, he's he'll just fucking win in Asian games or something. I think we talked about this last time, Blake. Sungjae won the like the Asian games like shortly after, and it's like we made this whole big deal about you told me he had to beat forty five Asian dudes who uh, you never heard of. <laughs> he just had to do that instead. You didn't have to fucking um, win the Olympics or win a major. Like, I feel like they undersold that part of the story when it was a narrative. Big time. Wow, I just saw John miss a shorty on 11. They're replaying it right now. That, that was, was really did it. Oh, no, yeah. no, that was uh, he two, two putt for th- from 36 feet or something. Three putt, yeah. Yeah. Um, But Tom, man, I mean, I get why he was crying if he doesn't want the military thing, but he was like six shots back of the podium. Yeah, looking at it now, he was, yeah, four shots behind a decky. So it's not like he just missed out. Was that why he was crying? Did he say why? Um, That was why he was crying. Why else the fuck would he be crying? That'd be pretty weird if he was just crying for no reason. Well, I find it weird that he's crying that he he was four shots out of the podium. (laughs) He made double on the last. Oh, he did? Okay, I got you. So yeah, again, I didn't watch. And Devin, you don't like Scotty now either? I know you you were a Scotty guy before. Yeah, I mean, you, you guys know I've been a very outward, like Scotty fan since quite literally day one. But that guy, I'm with you. And if you want to go to, if Cantlay didn't miss a one footer on what the 17th at Heritage, it's another runner up. Sahith beat Cantlay by one. Yeah. So that's right. I knew there was another one. And I, yeah, we were all on that together. I know that was before I was here, but that sucked. And I, I've had, scotty at the masters this year i had him at the players he's been good to me it's been i'm so over the son of a bitch until he is seven to one i will be rooting for anything that impacts him negatively and the moment he's seven to one again i'm back like yeah because he's costing you fucking money it's always about money i don't care where anybody fucking gives a shit he's cost me like fucking probably a hundred thousand dollars this year it's yeah so i'm fully with you guys fuck him fuck scott it's bullshit. He's like, it's to the point where he ruined a really special thing. I, the best streak of my life. So fuck that asshole. Listen, if he was in control of the whole tournament, we just can't catch him. He's didn't make mistakes. I can live with that more so than the fact that he just stormed shoots us. Cause that's not even really what he does. He just shoots a 62 and rips it out of our fucking hands. The only other time was players and he would have won the players by five. If his neck didn't cramp up for two days. He would have. So yeah, I mean, he stole it right out of Tom's hands because Tom was too much of a pussy around him. Um, I mean, he was winning Memorial most of the time, but Colin had plenty of chances to pass him up. I don't know. Fuck that guy, man. I just I can't stand Scotty Scheffler. He's not the he's not the number one player in the world that we need or want. Give me somebody else. Yeah, so that was pretty stupid. Uh, Colin, I know we were really high on him. We thought we were going to win. It wasn't great. Ended up actually, once again, hitting the ball great statistically. He was 54th of 60 in putting, 55th of 60 around the green. Damn, he's been good around the green too. Yeah, I don't know. Does he have a winning problem, you think? I don't know. Next time you assholes tell me to bet him over fucking Rom at the same number, I'm going to tell you to fuck yourselves. You know what, Blake? We saved you a lot because that would have been the fucking worst day of your life if you imagine that. Tommy. Imagine that if I had Rom and Tommy. Rom doesn't even fucking meddle. Jeff had Rom and Tommy. I know. I was talking to him. Oh, I was like, dude, that's, that's gonna brutal. be like the worst, the worst beat ever. Oh, at at one at one point it seemed like it was one of Rom or Tommy. I remember there's a bunch of people in um a chat, uh, my Discord saying, "Do can we hedge on Rom?" Well, yeah, he had the tournament in his fucking hands. <laughs> and I don't understand what happened. Did he lose his powers for fucking two hours? I I sent you the text, Matt. I was texting one of my friends yesterday, and I sent it straight to you. This is when Rom was walking off 10 green. And I said, right here, John's going to make this interesting. It's who he is. He's not. He doesn't win by six. Mm-hmm. And, and I yeah, still think John makes this interesting. It's who he is. Probably hits a big dick shot in a pressure moment, but his wins don't come from winning by seven. 
he went bogey bogey the next two because yeah we were talking about it it felt like liberty national it did and i um tommy was the tony i didn't think it was that um of a of a sure thing when he was up i, I really didn't and i wrote i tweeted rom is too good because i really want to just throw it out there in the universe that that reverse jinx like because anytime you think it's too good to be true and if i was on rom and someone tweeted what i tweeted I would have been pissed. So that's why I did it to try to fuck everyone who had ROM so I could benefit from it. I love it. Love that. And it, then all, all the libs started coming after me. Oh, how's ROM now? I said, buddy, I, you know how fucking hard I'm rooting against John ROM right now? You think I give a fuck that he fucked up and, and choked or whatever you want to say? Good. That's what I literally wanted to happen and the reason why I said it. Quite literally, your job to fucking comment on golf. Yeah. What, what the hell are you supposed to say? Um, <laughs> Exactly. The only Connor I have, Devin, for he has run away in a couple of his wins. I mean, Augusta he fucking ran away and hide hid. Yep. Did he run away or did the others crumble? Like that's just an honest question. Um I feel like he just kind of stood still. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, Brooks was bad. 75. Rom shot 69. That was a great day. It was a great day. It was a great day. I didn't have either of them. So I had both of them. <laughs> I had fucking Jordan, and he came in, got like third on Sunday. Yeah, we had both. That might have been one of the best sweat-free days we've had. I had more money on Rom, so I was rooting for Rom, which put me in a weird spot because Brooks is my guy, and I was never a big Rom fan. And that was while everyone said Brooks sucked, too, and Rom was on yeah. the PGA Tour. Yeah. Yep, and I had hit Brooks the week before at the live event in Orlando, that ship, ship, ship bag place, Orlando, that they played at. You could cat. Yeah. Uh, what a day. Um yeah, Olympics. We got a Thor top 20. That held on. Good call. Yeah, that, thankfully. Yeah. Fucking Sharma. I don't know what that guy's deal. He's got a terrible short game. Yeah, he, I mean, maybe that's why he sucks at golf. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he made, that fucker made so many bogeys. It was just circle square, circle square. And what had happened with X? He, he just didn't have it yesterday. He started missing drives, and then he hit, he hit one in the water from the rough. Um, oh yeah, we didn't. I didn't really answer your question about what happened with Rom. He started getting that double cross. You know, he tries to fade it and goes hard left, and it fucking just yeah. goes left on him. That's like his problem. Um, did that like two or three times, and then was missing short putts, which kind of has plagued him all year. Uh, and that's honestly the reason why I didn't. He was very popular last week. I didn't really love him because I don't think he has his A game yet. I think it's still working up. Like he was at his C game all year. Now he's maybe up to his B game. He's not quite at his A game yet. We need him though. We need him to restore order. He's gone. There's, I don't, I think, gun to your head. If you, everyone, every player was six to one. And I know you might say Scotty here. Every player in the world is six to one. And you're only, you can make one bet and you have to put your entire life savings on it. And they, it's who wins a major next year. Who would you take? Who wins a major next year? I'm in a golf term. I would have said Scotty Major. I think it's Rom. Yeah, mine is Rom. I don't think you can. I think those are the only two options. I'd say Scotty, but then it's Rom. Yeah, right. I, but I those are the only two guys. There's not. There's not another guy, right? Scotty's gonna win the fucking U.S. Open. <laughs> not if Brooks has anything to say about it. Gonna whoop our ass there. It's um, you yeah, I, I mean, huh? You think Brooks at Oakmont? Well, it's just the Northeast stuff. He was 13th there as a puppy in uh, 2016. Um, I mean, any 40 to ones out there? No, I saw 28. 28. Yeah, I don't hate that. No, I, I like him in the Northeast. No, I mean, he, he plays well at all the DJ courses. Those That's Northeast true. Poa courses. Is, isn't it a it's it's a Ludwig place too, isn't it, Blake? It's just a little bit of a longer die course. That's all it is. Yeah. Like, yep. You know who else might like that? Tony. Yes. Yes. Like it. Uh because to get this all... lawsuit figured out. But yeah, to answer your question, I don't think there's a third guy. Who would be the third guy? Hovland. Can't say that with any confidence at the moment. Ludwig. Call Call me crazy, X. I think that's probably the one other people would give. Yeah. I'm not going to give it. Right. He, 
he gets Quail Hollow, and he he loves Augusta. Like one of those two, he's gonna be there. Yeah, I guess you could say Rory. You could put Rory in there with Quail. The guy has some serious problems. Yeah. <laughs> I wish I could say Ludwig, but it's just I'm, I'm gonna. I've already said enough propaganda on that front. I will be betting him at multiple next year, though. You don't need to get into the majors, Carlos Ortiz. You love Carlos. He's, he's growing he on me. Good man. at Quail. He'd be great there. He's really growing on me. I mean, what did he, what did he finish this week? Seven under, wasn't it? Five t twenty six. It's just the ball speed and shit. I think he's on the juice. Yeah, he pounds it now. You're you were onto that months ago when you said like, hey, are these guys juicing? Because he, what is he? One eighty six. Yeah, all the all the guys on the Torque A team have gained like. 10 mile per hour ball speed and 20 yards off the tee. Yeah. Ortiz was 170 in Tokyo. He hit it nowhere. And they're it's all good, good except Mito, who sucks ass. <laughs> He's terrible. Um, so yeah, Olympics again, overall it was a good event. Do I I really wish we won? I really wish we won. I really wish Tommy won. Uh and I, one other thing, and I understand this is another I don't think you can blame him for this, but I didn't really love how fucking satisfied he was with that silver medal. <laughs> it's, it's just new, man. I don't know. All these Olympians are, they love when they get a medal. Like, it's our bunch of the, uh, like, gymnastics people going crazy over bronze. It's good he has something to show for it instead of just heartbreak. Hideki was fucking really enthusiastic about the bronze. Yeah. Well, he missed out on that playoff the last time. Yeah. Hideki, I was impressed with Hideki this week. I mean, put it really well. I think golf's great when he's playing well. You like him at St. Jude? Yeah, I don't mind that. Lost in that. Did he win that playoff or did he lose the playoff? Lost the answer. That's right. I like, I had Burns in that one. That's one of my fucking killers. He has a three man playoff. That's right. Yeah, Burns missed a six footer. Uh, but I actually like you mentioned Decky, the other Asian guy on our TV at the end of yesterday. I text Matt earlier. Really like that one for Memphis. Tom Kim. Yeah. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. What um? He loves Zoysia. It's true. And short course guy. I mean, I was on him last year, and he played like two, three good days. But I I had Cantlay and Glover, so that was fucking sick. Um, anything else with the Olympics here? Um, I wish the uniforms were a little better. Agree. Agree. Like they, sh- they should be look more like their flags. Let's fucking do it right. If we're going to do it. Yeah. Right. Let's, uh, can we get rid of some of these? Why does all these shit, shit countries get guys? You should have a, have to have a certain GDP to get in. <laughs> right. <laughs> Like, why uh, does uh, Thailand get a guy? Well, I just think, I do think every country should. How can you have an event when every country doesn't have an equal crack at winning? I don't think that's fair. But no, these other, they don't all get, like, basketball, they don't allow every fucking country in. They don't? Running, they don't allow every country. They, they do fucking semifinals and shit. They don't allow every country in. Yeah, like the FIFA World Cup and shit. Like, the, they have qualifiers. They all have, they all have qualifiers. Okay, yeah, I'm not an Olympics guy, so I don't know. Yeah, I feel like they need to redo that. And everybody's talking about the, a mixed team event. I guess, I don't know. Fuck I don't, I mixed team events. Can I, I say that? that? Fuck that. <laughs> I want my stance on this to be clear. I don't personally, as a consumer, enjoy women's sports. Okay? I just don't. And I'm, I, I, I'm not trying to be sexist or whatever. But how come, say, this isn't... Uh, applicable to my wife but say someone's wife doesn't like watching men's golf but they like watching women's volleyball isn't that okay can't they feel that way yeah i i don't like watching women play sports it does not do it for me what about but um i mean women's golf's okay no it's fine it's all right but i don't want it mixed with the men it's just a different thing for me like if i had like i bet rose zang this week if if she's in the mix i'll be i'll be into it yeah, I'll watch. I mean, yeah. I always, I usually try to watch the majors for women's because I think it's there's pressure there. I like watching the pressure. I, 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 I don't compared to like other 
other women's sports. Like, right. But men's golf. I guess my main point is this: men's golf and women's golf are two different fucking games. They should not be, yeah, intermingled. And I don't want. I'll tell you one thing: I would never watch a men's women mixed team event. <laughs> you don't watch the Sweden one that Stenson puts on. Are you stupid? Absolutely not. I'd rather watch Stenson and Carl. But you would watch a women women's Olympics over. Yes, I would watch event, a women's mixed golf team event. event, right? Would I be having the time of my life during it? No, I wouldn't. But I would I would watch no. it. Obviously it's not the same, but like uh I mean if Rose Zhang's in the mix this week, I'm gonna I'm gonna be watching it. I'll watch it, but I mean, would you watch a female Lydia Co versus I I just don't care. If I don't have a girl in the mix, I will I won't watch it now. <laughs> um the one thing them, like what they think? hit it so freaking straight and it's like us is just like Amateur golfers, no matter how good you are, like you know, you can probably learn a little something from them as opposed to watching Bryson do shit that we'll never be able to do. Even fucking uh, somebody like Sep hits the ball like none of us would could ever dream of, and he's just run of the mill guy. So I think watching those girls play courses, it's like, hey, you can maybe learn something from it. But yeah, it doesn't move me, the consumer. Right. So would you, uh, for the Olympic format, would you support a team event? Not a mixed one, but like a men's team event. If it was match play. Like a four four on four type shit. If it was a men's women mixed event, I'd rather watch reruns of the Golden Girls. No, no, but get past that. I'm talking about just men. Okay, so men's I think it should be a bracket, like the Dell match play, but alternate shot match play. I think that would be sick. Oh, that would be fucking awesome. So alternate shot one versus sixty four, whatever. Uh so each team might have to play four or five, ma- four or five. Can't you just make it like nine home matches? Yeah, exactly. You could do that. Or, I mean, they they how many rounds did they play when they played the Dell match play? Some guys were playing six, seven rounds in the week. Yeah, yeah. pool play, and then. I mean, they have everything in the fucking. They have fucking break dancing as an event in the Olympics. We can't get a fucking team event in golf. <laughs> Yeah, or do like a um a single like a round stroke place qualifier, and then that's how you get your seating. Yes. And then um I think that'd be I mean imagine an alternate shot match play. I know the issue is they're not gonna have enough matches to. You know what? No, they could though because unlike the match play where people said no one cares about the uh, consolation match, they'd be for a silver medal and a bronze medal. There'd be a silver medal match and a bronze medal match. Exactly. Yep. So I think you, I think that's exactly what should should be done. Agree. Wouldn't surprise me if they did it either. They're talking about it. I don't think it would be alternate shot, which pisses me off. I want alternate shot. An alternate shot's the best. It would be best ball, I'm sure. Yeah. No, but aren't they talking about more of a um, stroke play? I don't know, but I'm just saying. They know. I know they're talking about a team event. Yeah, it'd be like the, more like the Zurich, I think, than it would the. But I think Matt, I think we need more team match play. I mean, that's what I'm most excited for. I'm I'm more excited for the live team finale than any other event for the rest of the season. Well, the Presidents Cup. <laughs> if the if it was the real Presidents Cup, I would. If they had the real best players, but the team match play for live is awesome because you get the Sunday signal. You, every it's exactly like the Ryder Cup except for it's these live teams. It's fun. I'm always watching foosball. Fuck foosball. When's the live match play event? Is it in August? No. No, it's October or something. Jesus. Late September, maybe. You said, I remember you telling me like a month ago, this is the most fun you've had in a long time. <laughs> it was. Bet every matchup. You know, from all fun is the Ryder Cup, it's the same thing, except we're betting on fucking Brennan Steele versus Carlos Ortiz. <laughs> <laughs> and not fucking Bob Mack or Wyndham Clark. Yeah, so it's obviously not quite the Ryder Cup, but I love betting that that style. Uh, and then you can also bet teams to advance while you're at it. So not an individual matchup. You get the team matchup, Torque versus Fireballs or whatever, and then you can bet each matchup if you want. What did you think about what Ram said, like the country should be able to choose their players they want to send? I think that absolutely should be the truth. I mean, I think the, they should be able to determine who they think gives them the best chance to win a medal. Why is the entire world going based on official world golf ranking systems because no one not every country that really benefits the pj tour players more than anybody 
So how do they do it in the other sport, like track and swimming? Each country has their own um, qualifier. Yeah. Yeah. I would. Um, so yeah, they should I, do. They should have their own qualifier. Like, the why, right. Like why would Mexico, who has no players on the PGA Tour, have to use the the ranking system that's primarily benefits and used by the PGA Tour? Their players play in a different tour. Right. There, the live guy still qualified. <laughs> yeah. Um, but who got fucked on that? I mean, obviously Cam. Cam. I mean, Bryson. It'd be nice if 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 Great Britain had Tommy Sergio. Hatton. Right, Hatton. Hatton. Hatton actually got really fucked here. Fitz was having a horrible fucking year. Sergio, Sergio gave his spot to Puig, didn't he? That's, Did he give it to him? Yeah, I pretty. I think he gave it to him. Do you want me to look it up? Mm -hmm. I'd like to know that. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think I he said it was something there. about just an opportunity for the young guy at Live, who is obviously fighting for every opportunity he gets at this point. Well, you also get world ranking points. Yep. Yeah. Shows how much it means to them. Is he giving him his give him up his spot at Augusta? No. So I think a lot of I, I do honestly believe a lot of this talk that they have is a little bit of a dog and pony show. I don't think there's a, any agreement coming anytime soon. No, no. I mean, I think the talk that they're having, like all these players saying the Olympics means more than a major and shit. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. It definitely doesn't mean more than a major, but. So Sergio committed to giving it to him, but when Puig made the cut at the U.S. Open, he qualified for it anyways. Okay. But he was Sergio was going to give him the spot if they didn't. How about that? How about your your Italian Matteo? We gonna get on him here soon? Yeah, I mean, I have him penciled in at two two spots coming up um, relatively soon when the DP World Tour starts. His stats are fantastic. And these are courses he was playing really well at when he was good. Um, I, I want to say the DP right. World Tour schedule. What's he have next? What events are coming up? Because I'm pretty sure Rahm and Hatton are playing them. They are, and that could be good for the odds for Mateo. Mm -hmm. Neiman's probably going to play in them too, right? Tyrrell's going to go win on the DP World this fall, isn't he? Yeah. Devin, can you pull up the DP World Tour schedule and say the next yep. two events? I can. Um, yeah, Tyrrell's, Tyrrell, Tyrrell and Rahm are both playing. They need four events to maintain eligibility, so they must be paying fines. Rahm said he hasn't play, paid him yet. He will... He's kind of, ways. yeah. He's kind of figuring out what uh, he's doing with his wife. Do we know what's going on with that? I don't know. So they got the Czech Masters coming up in two weeks. Okay. Danish Golf Championship. That's gonna be a shitty event. Um, the British Masters. Then the British. That's a great event. Yeah, hosted by Sir Nick this year. Okay. Um, I can see Hatton. Eh, maybe not. Uh, then the Omega European Masters. That's what Ludwig won last year. Yep. Mm -hmm. Not Swiss. And the Irish Open. I know Rom's playing that. Rom's won that twice. That's and on then, my birthday. And then Wentworth. And then the Open Day Espana. I know Rom's playing that. So. Then Alfred the, Dunhill. The Dunhill. Then we're back <laughs> at Le Golf National. No one's going to play. Uh, but actually, it's not a bad thing because we might have a little bit of history to see what's going on. Um, but so Mateo, when he was good, 2010 was third at the Omega European Masters, 18th the following year in 2011. In 2017 at the Czech Masters, he was T9. Uh, and then the British Masters in 2018, he was T22. So I just I like him at all those spots considering the way he's playing. He's gained... Almost five, more than five strokes on approach at the Olympics. Finished T18. You bet him at Le Golf National. Yeah. The Open was T31. The Scottish T15. He's playing really well. Didn't he have a bad Sunday at the Scottish too? Yes. He, um, he gained like five in approach in one day Saturday. He shot a 70, yeah. Oh, he shot four rounds of 69 in uh, the Olympics. 
Yeah, so I like him coming up. Boom. All right. Wyndham? Wyndham. Wyndham. Right. Wyndham, this is a uh, last good event. tournament. Last event of the year, finale, season finale. So it is important in terms of who's getting into the FedEx Cup and is important to monitor. You know, I think there's some research out there as to if guys who need to play well, play well. But um, we'll talk about that as we go through the list here. We got uh, Sedgefield Country Clubs, Donald Ross Design, Greensboro, North Carolina. Um, par 70, 7,100 yards. Played 6,900 or something last year, so it's short. Usually fast, Bermuda Greens. There's going to be a lot of rain and stormy this week, so I don't know if they're going to be quite as fast, but these Bermuda putters typically like to spike here. Uh, 156 guys in the field. The top 70 in the FedEx Cup rankings will move on to St. Jude next week. Um, and we got some... Interesting guys teeing it up, considering the fact that they need to get in. Uh, past winners. Let's start in 2016 and see who won at 21 under. Then you got Henrik, 22. Brant Seneca, 21. Poston, 22. Herman, 21. So 22, 21, alternating every year. Kisner, 15. That was like a seven-man playoff or whatever. Tom Kim at 20 and Lucas Glover at 20. So we're looking at all years besides one between 20 under and 22 under. Yep. Um, and this is where you bet either an Asian or a Fanuc. <laughs> <laughs> That's all you need to know. <laughs> Asian or a Fanuc. Well, I got both on my card, so I'm good. <laughs> That's what the Wyndham Championship is all about. You just listed the names. You had Siwoo there. You had, uh, who else did you have there? Uh, Kisner. Um, Snedeker, um, there you go. Herm they all, Herm, Hermanator, they all fit the fucking mold. Who won it last year? Oh, JT Poston, he's right, right in there. Glover, Glover's not either. Glover's not either. That was the anomaly. So we're going back to the Asian yeah. of the Fanuke. <laughs> all right. I, um, anything else in the course? Anything else? I might add that Jim Herman's win was the worst fucking week of my life. I had. Billy and Siwoo and Herman went 61 63. So I'm scarred by this place. We had Billy. That was terrible. Siwoo shot like 71 on Sunday going in with a three shot lead or something. Was that the CT Pan year? No. Uh, Pan was a few years before Medicare that. Like Medicare shot a 59. Yeah. I feel like I bet Billy a lot here. Billy, I know you guys had him. Missed that. What was it? Like six feet on 18 force playoff with Herman? Wow, was that the year we had him? I don't know. It was, don't know. yeah, 2020. Was. Remember when Scott? Remember when Scott missed the four footer? The that was the year. That was the year Henley fucked us. Yes. Oh. Was that the six year pl six man playoff year that kids yep. won? Yep. Henley didn't even make it into the playoff after having a four shot lead on eleven. Jeez. That was so bad. That was, and that was when um, I got in trouble at Action Network for calling him a pussy ass bitch. <laughs> <laughs> that was such a collapse. That was so bad. We were live on the back nine, too. Yeah. And then that year, uh, I had Tom Kim and you and Sunjay, and you only had Sunjay. Yes. And Tom Kim just fucking went nuclear on Sunday. Just made a million putts. A million putts. It was fucking wild. So we did, We know the recipe around this place. Um, and just to kick it right off, this guy's the favorite. You and I, Blake, especially, I know. I want to say as far as early in the season, we were talking about Sanjay at the Wyndham. Um, and, and I know Devin had some screenshots he sent me of us saying it in June, a couple months ago, June 30th. But I remember dating back all the way to February saying about Sanjay at the Wyndham that this was what he was going to win. Now, since that, since we've talked about that, and even since late June, Sanjay is now scorching hot. Uh, and fortune hot well he playing, hasn't done his one well, he hasn't done his one he hasn't won since 2021 21 or 2022 it's been a while um and when he won it was a fall event in asia or whatever the hell it was zozo or something on the striners 2021 in 21 okay so it's been three years plus since he's won and now let's look at his last 10 starts or so t4 at wells fargo T9 at the Schwab, T8 at Memorial, T3 at Travelers. We were on him at 80 to 1 that week. 
T12 at the John Deere, T4 at the Scottish, T7 at the Open. His statistics are incredible. Putting is awesome. Around the green is awesome. Approach is awesome. Off the tee has been solid. Hitting fairways. Distancing is not going to hurt him here. His course history is incredible here. Uh, <laughs> absolutely incredible. He's he's um, he's three top ten finishes in his last five starts here. The worst finish he's ever had at this course was 24th. In his last 36 rounds, he's second in strokes gained total at the course. Uh, good Bermuda putter. He's a Bermuda guy. I just think this is when he breaks the seal. I texted everyone I know last week and said, empty your savings account, sell your stocks, do what you got to do to put the biggest bet you've ever made in your life on Sungjae on Monday, regardless of the number. You guys got 18. I woke up at 645 and got, and got 16. Fine with it. Every, yeah, we've been telling everybody, Sanjay at the Wyndham. That's been our motto the last two weeks. Um, obviously, we've been t talking about it directly with each other for a while now. And he just happens to be peaking at the the best time to peak to win the Wyndham Championship. Um, I was absolutely stunned when I woke up to an 18-1. to 1. I, I, I was texting with you last night, and we were like, what? What if he's 12? I was like, we're betting it. I would have bet, <laughs> bet down to 10. Yeah, I would have bet down to 750. <laughs> I mean, there's nothing getting me off Sunjay. 18 to 1 is a fucking steal. Yeah. And I think 16's a steal. It is. There's still 16s out there. Oh. 14's a steal. It's all a steal. Um, I, I, this is the biggest legal bet I've ever made in my life. Wow. Um, this might be the biggest bet I have, I've had on a guy, on guy before. Act, you know what? This is the biggest fucking wild. I'm just fucking loading up. Yeah. Loading Sun up Sun I've had to spread it out in the past, but I've never had a single ticket of 3,000 or more on a guy. <laughs> oh, just loading up the clip. I'm on every site betting 16s, fucking 18s. I can't get enough. I, I've got to add, just for the people at home that are listening and they didn't get to, we logged in before we started recording. These guys were talking about every 16 they see that they're getting more. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm getting as much as they'll physically allow me to get, and I'll worry about paying for it later. Yeah. <laughs> every 16 they see, they're going to smash it. We got like eight sites. I'm just, if it's 16, it's getting hammered. <laughs> You know what? We're never going to pay for it. You only pay for losers on those sites. Exactly. Uh, now, concern is... My biggest concern is the weather. So what's the weather looking like now? Um, let me pull up. I got your right here. It's just a lot of rain yeah. from the hurricane. Thursday, it looks like... one. I'm looking at 1.6 inches. Friday, another point. Or another three quarters of an inch, and it's gonna be wet Saturday, and then Sunday it's gonna be sunny. Good to go. Mm -hmm. Nice soft golf course. Don't the Asians love the soft golf course though? Yes, because Asia is just humid as ever living hell. But it's also equal wind. There's no wind draw this week. We're sitting 20 mile an hour winds and rain the first two days, and we're sitting no wind at all over the weekend. Yeah. Well, so concerned about the wind with him? How's he in the wind? We just finished seventh of the open. It's true. Boom. And fourth at the Scottish. I know there wasn't that windy, but um and he's a Honda guy, isn't he? He is. And let's see, what year did he finish second in the Masters? The only year that it was 20 under and soft. Travelers are fucking those rain delays fucking all week. Finished and third. His win Shriners was 24 under. Sung Jay, I'm pretty sure since his pro day or his PGA Tour debut, I think he leads the PGA Tour in birdies since that time. I they are they're always big on that stat on the broadcast every year. I wouldn't happen to have it with me right now, but they always mention how he is the number one birdie guy because he plays so fucking much too. I love that he wasn't in the Olympics. Yes, I love that too. And I was looking at two. So he's also won that Bahamas Great Exuma event, which is always really windy. That Akshay one as well on the web.com or the Corn Ferry Tour. 
Yeah. So wind players typically play pretty good in that. He was actually. I mean, yeah, the, the Honda was super windy that one year. I think that he won at minus six. He's he's first in my model. So also, I got to say this: the people, there's always people in my mentees that are always upset about me writing a model and everything, and then just having nobody in the model that I actually bet. So this week they're gonna be they're gonna be happy because I bet the number one, number three, and number four in the model. Boom! Let's go. Who's number two? Uh, number two was um. Actually, sorry, I bet one, two, and four. Yeah. Three was Lowry. Okay. Pretty bad history on his end too. Yeah. So yeah, we're loading up on Sunjay. I don't know if there's anything else to talk about. I, I, we, we've told everybody and their mother to bet it. Let's see. It's last 36, seventh in approach, third in birdie or better. Love it. And I'm with you guys. Like you, you sold me on this one a month ago. I wanted to take him and Benny on and figure out the rest. And Benny isn't here. So I wanted to take him and Henley. I was ready to fucking double barrel him and Henley. Yeah, I would have too. His dad passed. That's why he's not here. Yeah. He yes. originally committed. Yeah. So his dad passed away like last week. Um, it sucks. I like him at the St. Jude too. Poor guy. Maybe he goes and wins for him. That'd be cool. He's playing in the playoffs. He already said. He did? Yeah. Nice. How old was his dad? 85. Oh, okay. Not a, you just make that up? No, I looked it up. <laughs> okay. Not a huge... I mean, obviously, it sucks to lose your parent, but obviously, after what I went through, I feel like uh, I've gained appreciation for parents who get to live a long life. Yeah. My grandparents died in their 90s, and now, looking back on it, I was like, pretty happy with how that went. Yeah. Okay. Anything else on Sun? Who's the winner? Uh, Best, let me get the best line for everybody. It is still 16 to 1 on FanDuel and 365. So that means you guys need to go take care of that too. I can't because FanDuel fucks me in every way they can. And <laughs> up until now, um, I don't know if it's still the case, but FanDuel was offering the same price for with the without markets. You can take the four favorites off the board and still get the same price in all the long shots that we're taking. Wow. That's Nuts. their way of saying, hey, asshole, Sung's your winner, or what? So it's either that or a mistake. But I deposited into it to try to take advantage of it. And let me tell you what the fucking they let me bet on these, on this market. <laughs> it's like seven bucks on each guy. They're doing that with a lot of people. I actually was talking to a few other guys that told me that they, uh, they couldn't get anything in on these guys. But this is what I don't understand. I don't think I've ever won a bet on FanDuel. It yeah, was, it's crazy. I've, my, like, I would say FanDuel, I'm a net positive of over 30 grand this year. And they haven't limited me a goddamn second. And I can't get in $20 on DraftKings. And I, I'm in the same, I don't fucking win there. I don't bet there. I don't get it. It's weird. And, um, very very weird. So Cooch, they only bet eleven twenty five to win eleven hundred. Yeah, good. <laughs> it's, it's bizarre. So I now have money in the account that I just deposited that they won't even let me let me use. Oh, but there is a Dingers Tuesday five bucks for every home run hit. <laughs> Might have to do that. <laughs> um. All right, who's next on the odds board? So for our odds. We in the twenties we have Siwoo, Shane, Billy, and then this guy I mentioned earlier, Matt, uh Cameron Young. Thought I saw some thirties on Cam Young. Yeah, he's down to twenty eight now. I guess there is a that is bet MGM is still hanging out a thirty and the rest is twenty eight. And I'm you know, not on him, but you know, you know what's so cool eye. about having a Sun J eighteen is like I can bet other guys like good players. Even though you don't need to. Uh, yeah, I don't even – I wasn't going into this week after Henley withdrew. I was like, I can't – I'm going to bet Sungjae and Bombs. But now I can actually – with an 18, I can actually bet a semi-decent play if I want. I don't know if I'm going that route, but – All right, so what do you think of these other guys in these range, in this range? Shane, um, 
playing decent okay uh not for me here of course history is pretty bad um not particularly sure why he's playing i don't get it but uh okay what's he in the, what's he in the fedex i mean he got that fucking fake win from the zurich especially at devon if you he's pull 10th. the FedEx. Yeah. i get the fedex up he's 10th okay so he doesn't need to play no I think he likes this. Probably just likes it. I guess he hasn't been that great at it, but yeah. Um, and then I, I think Billy and Siwu, you got something there. Billy, well, they're both just horses for courses here. Um, and I think Billy's playing some fantastic golf. A little worried about the withdraw. He was an illness, but it should be okay. I mean, look at his. He's got four top tens. Since 2016, another 11th, too. So five really good starts. Um, three top three of those are top fives. And then Siwu has uh, he obviously won it, and he has three other top fives. Um, the only problem with Siwu is he always statistically hits it well, but he, he just finishes 30th every week. So right. I, think lean, I think I'd lean Billy over Siwu. I like what you pointed out there, Blake, about how Billy – it took him time to play this course and learn it. And then once he did, he just started running through it every year. It took him five years to learn how to play the course. Isn't Billy a guy that you can see being a Wyndham winner? Yeah, absolutely. Oh, yeah. We've had him here in the past. Um, so I guess some these aren't really concerns, but reasons why I typically don't bet guys. He's won already a crappy event this year. Uh, I don't know if that how much that matters, but birdie or better. Better in this field. He's 136th of 154 guys, and he's 50th in approach in his last 24 rounds. So he's almost like he's grinding out good scores and not really going and making birdies. Okay. He's been, he's been good I, in the tough events. Yeah, I think that's but fair. Where was that? His win was what? Corrales. I don't know if that um, is even factored in, though. That had to have been minus tw- that was that was a big time bird fest. That was like minus twenty five. Yeah, and he basically had the back nine that Scheffler did yesterday. He fucking roared into that thing. He was like six back to start the day. Sixty three shadows minus twenty three. Yeah, I can pass on Billy. But uh, he uh, he was the one I was considering up here. I get the Cebu case too. The course history is really good, and he's playing okay. But it doesn't feel like he wins. I mean, I'm perfectly fine with just loading up on Sung and then betting some guys down the board. That's what I want to do because I'm betting a lot of money on Sung. Okay. Any anything on Cam Young? I mean, I I think it's this could be one of the sneaky, like maybe a sneaky little spot for him. What's he been doing lately? He was right there at the rocket, broke his fucking driver. Oh yeah, that was uh you guys were talking about how big of a loser he was after that tournament. Yeah, and there's some strange, like a lot of guys that have won here, they've lived in, like Matt had hinted to earlier, they've lived in the top 15, 20, kind of in that month coming into it, especially at the Rocket. And I, plus, it's just a talent play in his region. Guy He's time to play better there. golf again, yeah. Ninth at the Travelers, six at the Rocket. So... I saw that 30 to one and almost clicked it, but then I was thinking he's a fucking loser. Fuck that guy. I'm good. Decent number though. It is like it. And not many people are talking about him this week. Just don't, I don't love the course for him. And I don't find him to be a pussy or an Asian. So (laughs) yeah. I mean, I think it could be, it's not something I really want to bet, but I do think like, would it surprise me if he ended up playing well here? And no, because he has he people think long, you know, he's played good in some difficult majors, but a lot of his regular good finishes have been at shorter courses. Yeah, Valspar. Um, he's never played here. He's thirty fifth in the FedEx, so he's easily into. So yeah, I would I would pass, but I do um, I see some intrigue there. Uh, just. I guess I'll point this out too. So last week, I look at the data golf course similarity rankings a lot, and I don't. I typically don't think it's all that indicative of what happens. But last week was pretty good. They had API and waste management as the two courses that are most similar to 
the Golf National. And those are two places where Scotty's been pretty dominant at. Um, two, wins, I know two wins each. Yeah, two wins each. And I know it's Scotty, so who the hell knows? But um, they also had like Fleetwood in the top five of best course fits. Yeah, I mean, Tommy plays API. Awesome. Yeah. Um, and I think so. This one, I did look at it just to, uh, just for the sake of looking, considering that it, it worked out last week. So I, I made a little, um, let's see, I made a little model of the top four courses they had and some interesting names. Uh, it was what, Keegan Lowry. What are the courses? What are the courses? It's Copperhead. Um, let's see, Copperhead. Hold on, I just have the model. I don't have the courses in my head. Um, do you remember what they were? Um, so no. it's Val, Valspar. Um, was Travelers one? Trieste, yes. Valspar, Travelers, and there's one more that I used. Um, yeah, whatever. Go ahead. Give me I can look after so I don't lose this list. But Keegan, Shane, Sungjae, um, some some weird shitty players I'm not going to list. Siwoo's up there. And it makes sense because this doesn't even include Wyndham. Yeah. So players that if you see players that have played on window, that means that it makes sense. Denny's up there, Rye is up there. Um Siwu, Bazadenhut, Batia, Cooch is fifteenth. Cam Young is sixteenth. Okay. Uh, Ryan Moore, Min Wuli, Webb Simpson. Again, good indicative. Um, because Meisner is twentieth. And that's about it. Okay. Good to know. Now I've also made a little another little just looking up some different mixed conditions here. E easy or very easy on courses that are short or average or very short with weak fields par 70. So it, that's a lot of factors you would think that it eliminates uh not many rounds but everyone in this thing had at least 36 rounds recorded. And Sungjae was second. Love it. Billy was third. Griffin was fifth. Um, Cooch was eighth. Um, Webb was first. What? Makes sense. So these short, easy courses. I know that was probably a confusing way to read. I'll just give you the list. Webb, Sungjae, Billy, Rose, Griffin, Todd, Svensson, McCarthy, Cooch, Lowry, Hughes. Okay. Next range. Next yep. range. So into the 30s, we have Spieth, Minwoo, Davis Thompson, Harmon, Akshay, and Rye. This was the other guy I was looking at was Harmon, 35. Um, starting to play better now. Fits the mold uh, of, the, of a Wyndham guy. A nuke. Yep. Um, course history, not particularly great he has a couple top tens the third in 2013 you surprised this course history is not great yeah that, i am that does surprise me he has two solid finishes but i just feel like he's like russell henley right he should be playing this course really well he should be i was on mayo show mayo's on him yeah i mean lately he's been he's starting to play better he was okay at pinehurst another ross design Ninth of the Travelers, Scottish, he gained 6.4 approach. I don't know. Thoughts? My thoughts are, this is a guy who was a loser for his entire life, and then he goes and wins a major. I just think it's going to be a while before he wins, if ever. That's completely fair to me. So let's move on. Next guy. <laughs> yeah. There, There's one guy I was interested in here. One on him a few weeks ago. Also had him when he was the runner-up the week prior, Davis Thompson. I think uh, he is a guy that – he was dominating in a region that isn't his. He's an island guy, Bermuda guy, short course guy, and he has no real weaknesses that can be highlighted on a shorter golf course. I just think he's playing great, and nobody should look at Europe as a reason to not think so. He had a few rounds in the mid-60s. I think um, great. We, 
Yeah, I think Blake and I are in agreement that that's, that he makes a lot of sense for this course and probably a bet that a lot of people would be making if he didn't win, but he just won. And is he going to win twice in four starts after getting his first ever career win? To me, that's just a situation I never go to. So I do get the appeal and course fit, but that's the reason why I'm out. Yeah, yeah. nah, he would it would never it wouldn't surprise me if he won the Wyndham at some point in his career because he fits the mold to a T. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Like and I'll just kick myself because I've been there. Like I bet him twice this year and clearly had a good feeling about him. I that means anything to you. I do have a pretty good feeling he'll play well. I'm probably gonna look at his top ten. Yeah. Any thoughts on uh Spieth? I just think he's hurt, and you can't bet him until he's not hurt anymore. Yeah. Would it and surprise then, me if he was involved? No, it wouldn't. It wouldn't? No, I don't know why, but I just I do have a little bit of a feeling that maybe he could play well. Doesn't he suck ass at golf now? Yeah, but I think he can get his way around this place. Gotcha. And then Akshay. Solid number, but I just think he... Uh, Went through his peak, right? Starting to go down that way. Descended, yeah. S same, same thought. So that driver, he's leaking it left a lot lately. Yeah, and then no interest in Minwoo. So next range. Um, that brings us down into the forties, where I once again am like a fucking crack addict, and Luke Clinton's forty to one. So you know how that goes. Should have bet Dave Thompson. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so I'm on Clinton. Uh, then we also have Dietrich, Mav McNeely, Bob Mack, Nikolai Hoygaard, and Cam Davis, and Bez. I didn't think of any of these guys, not once. The one that makes the most sense, I think, is Cam Davis. He loves this fucking place. You seen his history? It's decent. Very good. I know he's a Pete Dye guy. I know this is Don Ross, but I, I always think of it as uh, similar. Um, don't love Played here three but... times, 22nd, 15th, 7th, and it's just green down the line except off the tee in his debut here. Yeah, I can picture that. So looking at the course history rankings and the Don Ross rankings, he's fourth in course history, first in Don Ross. Uh, going back to a guy we talked about a little bit before, Billy is third in course history, second in Don Ross. Yeah, that's right. Cam Davis has won two, won the Rocket. That's a Don Ross, right? Yep. Yep. Won it twice. But yeah, he also just won. He also uh, just won. And I'm on uh, Clanton again for the sake, Matt, I text you and uh, – we're talking about Dave Thompson. We're talking about Cam Davis. Well, Clanton was playing right with those guys. And we're, same golf courses. I think the John Deere, it's the shortest golf course he's played up until this week. It was also his best finish. His worst finish came on the longest one. I'm going to lean into that and just think, hey, he's on Bermuda for the first time. And like This is where we would think we would want him. He's never grown up in the Midwest. So I think if you can get to 25 at John Deere, I think you can get to 20 this week. He plays his best. <coughs> Bless you. Go ahead, Matt. <laughs> uh, I don't really see the appeal here for him. I think he's a supreme ball striker, and that's what his future is. I know we mentioned he's been better at short courses and a short sample size, but I just think he can't separate himself with ball striking at a place like this. I think that's totally – yeah, I think there's a lot of cases, especially his kind of ball strike. And he's not a great wedge guy. Right. Kind of just... It's like, again, it's like, uh, you know, if I was betting John Rahm, does that mean he can't win the Wyndham? No. But is his skill set that he's the best at mitigated against all these, all these, you know, players who are good with the wedges and putter? And like, you know, it just, it just cancels out some of the things that makes him elite. Yeah, I agree. And like, that's why like, this is one of those, I can't miss the bus on it. And I do think he brings a pretty high floor just because of the caliber player he is. Um, like, if he just rolls out and gets 12, it's like, okay, whatever, that's my guy. And he, the one, I think it'll be interesting. He was pretty dang good at Pinehurst, another Ross design. And I had him as the low amateur there. And he 
miss the fucking six footer to lose that on like the 17th green on Sunday. Yep. So a talent play. And we've seen some young guys have success with the young Patrick Reed with Tom Kim. Uh, I know Poston's not as good, but he was young when he won too. But all three of those guys share a very similar skill set. Super. You think, you think Reed and Tom Kim? Short game. Well, yeah. like shorter hitters who get hot putters, good around the green, wedges. Yeah, I just I don't I don't see the fit at all. He doesn't feel like a Wyndham guy to me. But maybe maybe you know this game better than us. I don't know. This like, we got little think, on him so. though. <laughs> do you think Scott is a win like Adam Scott is a Wyndham guy? Or is he just ball, ball strike his way through here? I think prime would uh, prime Adam Scott isn't, but old guy would Adam Scott is. Okay, uh, you, you know Scott's game much. Like that's kind of the because that's who he is now. He's just a great putter, basically. How did he? I'm gonna look up Scott's history. He was playing think... this week. Yeah, no kidding. I do too. I'd be all over him. He's playing good. I would bet Scott wasn't that great when he was in his prime, and now he's been better at a place like this. Um, yeah, he didn't even really play here in his prime, but the one time he did, you're spot on, 63rd. And then in the older age, so he played it in 05, 09, 15, and then he's played it every year since COVID. Uh, he's got second a second and a seventh. seventh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Olds are pretty good here. Glover won last year as an old. Yeah. Yep. A foreshadowing that old dog. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Next uh, range. Um, or if we even going to go to range, let's go to our next bet. To say, next guy, we've got Eric Cole, who we can still get that at seventy to one. I believe that's what we all got it in at too. Yes. I thought seventy was a great number, man. He's he's playing well. He was, um fourth in my model 14th so he's 14th and strokes gain total this course fourth and donald ross he likes donald ross seventh and birdie or better 19th in bermuda putting basically everything we need him to do he does that's why he's fourth in the model um he's starting to play much much better of late kind of went through a little rough patch for a while but now he's turning it back on i thought everything he's been doing lately is encouraging he fits the mold of a guy who could win here yeah he definitely fits the mold of the fanuk um that can win here so yeah we're on it um we were talking about it we're hoping for a 50 we got a 65 um this would not surprise me if he won the Wyndham. it is crazy that he's 35 years old and it is tough seeing a 35 year old get his first win at the Wyndham here this week but hey i think he's got a great chance i i like what you said there blake i mean you kind of put me onto this one over the weekend and at 50, I don't think I'd be there. At 70, absolutely. And I know, Matt, in your interview with uh, Chubby, he was talking about how he's good friends with Eric's father. And Chubby's pretty adamant that, like, as we know, when Cole plays good golf, it stays for a little bit. And Chubby's pretty confident that the, that win could be coming for him. Yeah, yeah no before, he went over, before he went over the pond. I mean, yeah. sixth and seventh. So he's coming into some form. I like it. And um, yeah, so there we go. Bird, he makes a ton of birdies. He's a low, he's a easy course guy. Um, so I, I think uh, everything kind of matches up. I the number I was looking for was fifty. So seventy is great. I got a question. We passed on this one guy. Um, obviously not a course fit at all. But give me you guys thoughts on Kitayama. You've been talking a lot lately. I'm not a Kitayama guy. I've never been in my life. Uh, it just it just feels like he separates on really tough golf courses where he can use his driver. I just feel like I've been seeing him a lot lately. He was sixth in his last start. Approach was hot. I know he doesn't make any sense. He is Asian, which is the only reason why, but never played here. I don't know. I'm probably going to pass, but I don't know. I think something's coming for him for some reason. I can see that gut feeling you got. Um, maybe the Sanderson. Uh, yeah, play with Sanderson. 
Yeah, he can use a driver. I mean, look at his. I could be wrong about my perception of him. Uh, I'm just gonna look at his little. Uh, no, he's a bomber. Chart. He's a bomber. Yeah, he's a bomber. Driving distance. He's a good driver overall and good approach too. He's he's does every he can't really putt very well. That's his problem. Oh, horrific. And I just think we need putters here, right? Yep. Okay. Um, Speaking of putters, the next guy, 80 to 1, is Ben Griffin. He's first in his last 24 rounds in strokes gained putting on Bermuda. Number one, that is. And he's third in approach. So if you're third in approach and first in putting, that's a good recipe to make a bunch of birdies, which I think Ben can do. Um, and he's 25th in course history. He has the fourth place finish in his only start here, uh, previous to last year where he missed the cut. Um, he's 32nd in Donald Ross. I know he says eye issue going on. So I looked back at some interviews and stuff and he, um, he said it really only bothers him when it's really sunny out and it, um, when it's overcast, he doesn't really have any issues with it and you got to kind of take care of. So I don't think it's a major deal going forward. We'll see if it rears ugly head. Do my concern he's a loser? Yes. But at 80 to one, I don't not bet guys because I think they're losers. I'll bet him with you. Sure. Um, I do think he's a fucking loser. He's a short course Bermuda guy, though. Is he playing good, though? Well, he's third in approach in his last 24 rounds. Results playing okay. Up. He's good in Canada. Rolled it. He missed the cut the last two weeks. But he, one was the Open. And the other was and the he, 3M. And he still gained an approach in both and those events. 3M's a long course, too. That's not a Ben Griffin spot with... His driver. His driver is horrific. Yeah, I know. Uh, we had talked about that in the past. Freaking, I'm on Ben Griffin with you. Uh, at 80 to one, I saw it and it's like, yeah, I have to. Funny enough, uh, followed him on Instagram along the time where he left his office job to become a professional golfer again and pick golf back up. Uh, 2022 Wyndham. I was out of town. Didn't have any interest in really betting the event. He shot 59 the week prior to the event, just playing with his friend. So I single bowled him at 150 to one. He got fourth. So I, the margin for error isn't there, but I love the read on this one, Matt. He's just a guy that fits. Yeah, he definitely fits. He is he is the mold <laughs> of a winning yeah. guy. So um, yeah, I'll join you. So I said I was looking for 50 and 60. Uh, for a Cole and Ben, and I got 70 and 80, so. Boom. Yeah, same lot. I love that. Okay, and then uh, before we get to that old dog. Um... Oh, there was. I uh, I have one other guy in here. Um, the odds are go. pretty terrible in which I got. Would you guys like to just fucking blast me for this one, or should I? <laughs> I'm on Webb Simpson at 60 to 1. You can find him at 140. Don't fucking ask me questions about this one. It's just what I do. Dude tries to bet. Get all his bets in at 6 in the morning. He bets Webb at 55 to 1. I said, I said, what is he? Fucking 400? 60. I can't imagine taking Webb Simpson at 55 to 1 in the year 2024. But that's what I wrote down last night. I wanted Webb. I I'll get bet the bet at 140. Yeah. You too. It's great. I sprinkled. That's on 365 and offshore. Still uh, 55 on FanDuel, though. It's still 70 on DraftKings. I don't understand. That, that's where I placed it as FanDuel. Those bitches know I'm coming for them again. Maybe they're extra sharp or they know Webb's going to win. I mean, his course history is insane. The, <laughs> his best finish in like three years was last year at the Wyndham. He finished fifth. Webb Simpson has. 10 top 10s, seven top fives in a win. His daughter is named Wyndham because it was the first win of his fucking career. And he lives on the course. Like, this is just auto bet. I've taken it at four, fucking 14 to one before. It's like, yeah, 60 to one just for like, let's go web. This is, this is what I do with the Wyndham. Yeah, I mean, he's he's gotten exemptions into all the signature events and is 150th in the FedEx Cup. I don't know how that's even fucking remotely possible because they're giving out free points on the signature. He has been so bad. He has gained an approach one time since February 1st. Yeah, that's so bad. <laughs> 
But you know what? Yeah. He's, he's going to come play great this week. It's what he does. Yeah, we'll see. I don't know. I think he's dead. Now that I was looking at the FedEx Cup, Ricky Fowler's 104th. He's not showing up. He's just packing it in. That's embarrassing. See you in the swing season, asshole. <laughs> yeah. So Fowler's packing it in. I'll tell you who's not packing it in. Matt Kuchar. There we go. This guy, I'm, I, you know, he is, he has resilience, and I think he really wants to fight all the way through. He's made the FedEx Cup playoffs 17 straight years, and that streak is at a serious risk of coming to an end until, you know, last week, last start at the 3M, and this guy doesn't have much form, comes in there and grinds his way into the final group, uh, and I think – now he's going to a place where he hasn't played much in the past, but I, this is more of a course fit than a course history type play where he should play this event well. He's now 100 to 1 is the best line available. I think 100 to 1 is a great number with how he's playing. And you could say, so he gained 10 strokes in approach at the 3M that led the field by a mile. That was his best approach performance since 2011 at the Bob Hope Classic. And he gained 10 strokes on approach. An absurd amount. Now, you might say that's an aberration, and maybe it is. And I'm sure the 10 is an aberration. But he has been getting progressively better with his irons over the course of his last five starts. Gained two on approach at Memorial. Gained two at the U.S. Open. Pretty impressive. Gained one at Rocket Mortgage. Uh, gained 2.4 at John Deere. In two rounds, he missed the cut from a bad putter and he uh, off the tee. And then he goes and gains 10 at the 3M. So he's gained an approach in five consecutive events. He's gained putting in three of those five. And then the last two, the putter has been off. But this guy's a Bermuda Sea Island guy where this is the place where he putts his best. If he can gain six, seven on approach, not 10, and then brings that putter with him, I think this is a place he can contend. Old guys, Glover, one of that 44, Cooch is 46, uh, Kiz. These are all the type of players like him. How come he never played it before? It's last weird, isn't years. it? Yeah. Probably because he just got locked up and he's trying to rest for the playoffs. Yeah, he needs a he. I think he, I think he only needs a. He can only get a win to get in. Good, that's what I need too. Yeah, sucks. He's gonna come in second. So no, he's be going for the win now. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm in. I'm in. I, I I don't know what the 3M was. I, I didn't even know he was in the field at the 3M. I didn't either. <laughs> no idea. And then all of a sudden I'm battling with Johnny Vegas against Kucher. And I was like, this old fucking old dog's going to fuck me here. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. I'm in. I like the fit. He definitely fits the mold. And he needs to win. Yep. That's that. And it's something he cares about. That stat you gave, Matt, is unbelievable. Best approach week in 13 years. It's crazy. The guy's old as shit. We're in a sketch shirt. Just gained a little weight. Little uh, good guy, oh. great guy, sketches guy. Yep, family, family man. man. Exactly. To to make you feel old on the spot, and and for those of you that didn't know, Matt celebrated his birthday yesterday. But That's right, he, he Cooch was your age pro- yesterday. Well, two days ago, for that 2011 event. Wow. Jeez. So put that into perspective. Think of where you're going to be in 13 years, 12 years now. Well, I think I'm going to look a little better than Cooch physically, I would hope. <laughs> you hope, you hope you have the hair. Cooch is, Cooch is gone. Now. Know. And he's got that tubby belly. But I also, I also would love if I had his golf game at that age. And I think he, uh, I think he has one, one little run left in him. Love it. He's a little older than – he's old, though. Yeah. <laughs> He's 45 going on 70. You're on to something there, though, because when those old guys are hitting the fucking fairways like he is lately, they just they don't play bad. They're still pros for a reason at that age. There's only one way last year. Get it done. Yeah, I love it. I'm not on it, but I'm I would fucking die laughing and be happy for you if you won. But you're on fucking Webb Simpson at 55, (laughs) 60, 60, who hasn't gained an approach. Since uh, fucking January. Since oh, January. no, he has once since January. But Webb lives on the course. He's in his own bed. He's good. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we wouldn't he just got picked. You bet 140, not 55. You know what yeah. else? I was I was publicly um, advocating for Cooch to be the president's Ryder Cup captain. 
And then he started playing well, not because I advocated for it, but maybe he did feel spurned by the decision. He should. I don't understand why they're blackballing him. Just because of fucking L2 can? I guess. That was fucking like nine years ago. <laughs> and who cares? I mean, the guy still got... Yeah. Fuck L2 can. Um, okay, <laughs> just throwing names at you. Just give me yes or no. Novak 80? I'm going to be a no, but I think you like him. Sort of. If it was on him, he's, still, he's hitting it really well. See, I Island guy. Yep. Yeah. Mac Hughes, 80? I did look at him a little bit. His course history wasn't as good as I'd expect. What is it? Is he a Bermuda guy? I've always, like, I don't know. One RSM and Sanderson, both Bermuda. Okay. RSM's a great comp for this place, too. Yeah, I just yeah. think of him putting well anywhere. It's the only reason he's a pro. It's literally the only reason. Okay. Yeah. Of course, history blows. Um, I'm looking hard at this guy, Mark Messier. I, I honestly have no idea how to say his name, but uh, so those I, those at home wondering who he's talking about is Mac Meisner. Okay. Is that how you say it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, I looked at a picture of him. Definitely fits the mold. Yep. <laughs> I watched him gag. The fucking Cuda two weeks ago. Um, so, I mean, there's Russell Henley for you. And then approach-wise, he's been playing really well. He obviously almost won the Cuda. I'm sure his stats are great. Don't have anything on them. John Deere, 4.7. 3M, 4.1. Um, is it too early? Probably. But South Carolina guy, 90 to 1. Any thoughts? I, I see the appeal, I guess. Um is he, yeah, I don't know. Can he win? I don't know. I don't know if he can win. Um, I don't mind the read. What is he? 90. Ugh. Yeah, he'd like, like a buck 20, right? Yeah. So I, I, I'll think about it. The guys who I was looking at that probably don't make as much sense. C.T. Pan. He makes sense. Okay, so he's one. He's not one here. He's almost one here. He's good at the Olympics again. Uh, he was good at the Olympics. He was, he was second at the deer. So he's starting to play better. And obviously this is a shorter course where it's not going to be a huge problem that he's not very long off the tee. Um, accurate around the green, pretty good putter, pretty good wedge player. So T18 at the Olympics gained almost four in approach. And he was at the deer T2 stats were incredible. Bad at the open. Who cares? Um, course history, he has a T2 in 2018 that we mentioned. That's really about it. But he's kind of a heat check guy, I think. Yep. And the other well, guy was... Go ahead. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, go ahead, Matt. You got it. No, I want thoughts on CT if you have any. I, I was looking at him a little bit, but I'm with you. I don't know if it's more so the fit or we're just looking for an Asian guy. Yeah. But... Um, and then we'd have to add a third agent too. Yeah. Yeah. Get and I crazy. meant to ask Blake. He's a smally guy. Did you look at him? I mean, he's his history here. He's got it around the course in different ways each time, playing all right. And if he puts it all together, it's there. The one is time he, he missed the cut, he, was, right? he couldn't putt for shit, but he hit the ball great. And ev the other two times he played here, he was rolling it. Got he went to do it too. Played the three M well. Yeah, and he's 100 to 1. And I just know, like, Blake, you've been on Smalley twice this year. And I was wondering if he caught your eye on this one. Uh, I don't know. He went to Duke, right? 100 yeah. to 1. I don't know. I like Meisner. Messier. Yeah, he is playing a little better. Smalley? Yeah, he was played good at the 3M, but. I do think he's a loser. Definitely. But yeah, and that course history is just so interesting. I I that I really like taking guys like that where it's like okay they've got it around the course in different ways each time like because you've proven that you can do it here. He obviously drives it straight. I'll tell you he how hasn't I like. been recently actually. I like Brendan Todd at ninety hundred, and he last two of his last three starts here tenth in twenty twenty one seventh in twenty twenty three gains across the board here. At the Open, he finished T31, gained over five strokes in approach at the Open. Great putter. Another Sea Island, Georgia guy. 
Georgia Bulldog. We've seen some Georgia Bulldogs with some sec- success here. Um, obviously fits the mold of the dudes who win here. And he's an old. Yeah, I texted you last night. That's my Can response. I read the text? Yeah. <laughs> okay. This is the text that when I, when I asked Blake um, it, about Todd, because I, I do like him, he responded by saying, Oh shit, hold on. Fuck, where is How this? old is Todd? Oh. Todd is probably 42. I was going to say 41, 42. I feel like he's 39 oh, in a he's month. He's done winning. That's it? Yeah. <laughs> Dude, fucking he's Webb's that... only 38. I just looked at that. I'm like, what? Todd's better than Webb. And he, and he, uh, so he said, I have zero in. I said, why not Todd? Because he's an ugly, weird piece of shit who will never win again. <laughs> <laughs> he is weird looking, man. He, oh, he, he is. But, I mean, the cases that we're looking at, at the case, I don't see why we don't like him. I agree. I actually, looking at him now, top 12 and two of his last three here. You And I think it was Charles Schwab. I believe that was my first Wait, or second show he's here. He's got to gain six putty. But that's how people win here. What what was the event he gagged? Travelers? No, the deer. Oh well, yeah, he gagged the travelers too, but the deer. We were on DJ. Remember he, remember we were on Smalley. Yeah, and he was in the lead. And yeah, and Todd just started like the only thing he does is putt well, and he just started missing fucking six footers. And remember he had those. He was good the first couple of days before the weather started whooping ass at Schwab. I remember Matt, you were kind of like pulling him out. It's like, hey, like this could be a spot. And he like showed some flashes. Like, There's some reasoning that like 100 to 1, sure. Why not? Bet it. I am, I am admittedly a Todd guy. Yeah, I know you are. He, uh, his, I'll tell you where I went. Okay. Sea Island guy. I was searching the board for him, couldn't find him anywhere in the hundreds, and I was like, "Fuck! This, is this guy fucking fifty to one? No fifties, no sixties." I was like, "Fuck! He might be forty to one. He's playing some good golf. This field sucks." Turns out he's two hundred to one. Matthew Neesmith. I don't understand why you guys aren't all over this two hundred to one. Isn't he usually a hundred to one in these fields? Did I miss something? He's had two. Two great fucking tournaments in a row. Second and a ninth. What's not to like? They weren't in a row. He missed the cut at the Barracuda in between. Oh, okay. Um, course Barbara history Scott. is not good at all. No? Cut T42, cut T36, T62. Okay. Gained an approach here one time out of five. Well, he's 200. Cost me nothing. No, I, I get that. And I do like the Sea Island connection, and he is playing, and he has some good finishes. He's definitely a guy who could, who could be a Wyndham winner. It's probably a better bet than Webb at 60 to 1. Oh, there's no doubt it's way better. He's only 30, <laughs> huh? I thought he was like this 35. Was his, this was his two best finishes. In three years, two years. <laughs> Is that the same? 20, oh, 2022. I don't know if that's a good thing or not. The guy just never plays well. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's what Jim Herman did when he fucking won here. True. Uh, asshole. Yeah, I don't know. I, I, no, I get it. <laughs> I like Todd better. Oh, yeah. Todd has a... Double the chance to win. And he's won. Um, so I don't know if I'm going to pull on Todd, though, or not. There's no other... Uh, I don't know, looking down the board, I don't really see any any other guys, do you? No, I mean... None of you guys like CT enough to bet him? 90? No, nah, it's not a good number. Um... T- you guys like Chaz at 400 to 1? I was looking at that. Um, for whatever reason, my model liked him, but 
overall, I just don't think. I think he's dead. He's sneaky old too. He's gained and gained pretty big in approach in seven out of his last nine. Putter's hot in his last three. Top ten at the Barbasol. Obviously hits it fucking nowhere. He hasn't missed a fairway since Byron Nelson. What good has that done him? Is he a Bermuda um, guy? He his history isn't great here, but he has multiple top tens just a long fucking time ago. Looking wild, Kisner's four hundred. Chez, yeah, his irons are starting to get better. Chez was fourth. I mean, obviously, he, Chez fucking loves the Travelers, as we know. Yeah. Uh, I just think short course guy. You want birdies. You want potentially liking men. And the other comp was Valspar, <laughs> which he is T12 this year. I think I'm going to go add Chez. I think I'm doing that. What is he, 400? 400 to 1. I, I'm in. I, f- I am fucking addicted to betting on Chez. <sighs> Damn. I mean, I mean he has no chance to, to win, but it's not a bad bet. No. I mean, it's yeah. either that or I'm going to take Sneds at 800 to 1. Just piss away money. So. Well, the benefit of that would be piss away half as much money as you would on Chez. I mean, you can literally bet like $3 on Sneds. <laughs> yeah. Don't don't we have an obligation to do that? No. I like Sneds, but as a person. Has he done anything this year? Um Sneds Sneds has missed one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. He's missed eight out of his last nine cuts. He had hip surgery. Or some uh, surgery. He's lost an approach like 19 of his last 20 starts. Yeah. He also has. Wow, oh. that's really. He's missed 16 out of his last 20 cuts. But man, he fucking loves the place. Yeah, just. Not going to happen. It's not going to win. No. No. Neither is Chess. All right, we're hour and a half. We're going to call it the call of the day. Yeah, just toss all your all your money on Sung Jay. We can, we can talk about these other guys, but none of it matters. Every yeah. time I think about like betting a tar or something, I'm just going to take that hundred bucks and just go put more on Sung Jay. Exactly. <laughs> so there we go. Go Sung Jay. To go over it for yeah. people, you've got Sung Jay, Cole, Ben Griffin, and Matt Kuchar. At Correct. Eight. 16, 70, 80, and 120 to 1. Mm-hmm. And then Blake, I believe you have that plus Neesmith at 200. I haven't bet Griffin yet, but I will. And I haven't bet Kucha yet, but I will. Right on. And then I, I'm with you on the Cole, Griffin, Sung, and then my two on Clanton and Webb. Five for me. And I'm going to add Chez. Boom. If I, if I had anybody, uh, it's going to be the Todd 100. Again, none of it matters besides Sung Jay. So go Sung Jay. Hopefully the weather cooperates. Have a go good Sung week. Jay.